Hello everybody, this is SC Slayridge, and today I'm going to be talking about Pokemon Go. For those who are somewhat unaware, Pokemon Go is an app that was recently released on the App Store for smartphones, and it uses GPS tracking to follow your real-world location as you walk around to find Pokemon of all types, though currently we're only looking at Generation 1. There are also uh, Pokestops placed at nearby landmarks to refresh your items and encourage you to keep moving, and people can set lures to those Pokestops so that more Pokemon will show up around them, which in my personal experience has drawn crowds of dozens of people or even more to real-world locations to play together, and in short, it's basically a game about becoming a real-world Pokemon master. Before I get into any specifics about why the game is great and not so great, I think it's worth giving some context for my playtime. Right now I've walked 47.2 kilometers according to the game, and I've visited 462 Pokestops. So far that's brought me to level 20. I'm not one of the highest level players out there, but I am far from a beginner at this point. And with that context in mind, the first thing I want to talk about is how cool the game is. I didn't hear anything about Pokemon Go before it released, so it came straight out of the left field for me, and it quickly exceeded any expectations I had for a phone app. Pokemon Go brings in all the nostalgia of the first generation of Pokemon while beautifully integrating exercise, exploration, and socialization all at the same time. I can't express how cool it is to see 50 people, literally 50 people, sitting outside City Hall talking to each other about the Bulbasaur they're trying to all catch in the area. I've also been to places I never would have had any reason to walk to in the past 5 days, and I certainly wouldn't be walking 50 kilometers within a 5 day span for no good reason on a normal week. This game has been really fantastic for me personally, and I think it's the best app I have ever seen on a phone, and the fact that it's so immensely popular only boosts that even further because you see so many other people participating. So the ultimate goal of Pokemon Go is to catch all of the Pokemon, right? And that goal would require a lot of luck in traveling, just like it does in the real game. Certain high-level Pokemon can only be found through hatching rare eggs, which require you to walk 10 kilometers, and no, you can't just drive. If you go too fast, the application doesn't give you credit for the distance traveled, so I guess you could putter along in your car if you were absolutely hell-bent on not getting exercise, but if that's your prerogative, waste the gas, amigo. Some rare Pokemon are much more likely to be found near bodies of water, or in urban areas, or... I've even been told that weather patterns can affect the Pokemon that turn up, but I can't confirm that personally. The moral of the story here is that in order to catch them all, you will without a doubt have to explore and travel and put effort into it. The game requires it, and in my opinion, that's a really good thing. That makes it more fun. However, most Pokemon aren't entirely too rare. Even the starter Pokemon, Squirtle, Bulbasaur, and Charmander, are all uncommon at worst. That's because the game requires you to level Pokemon through the use of candies, which you gain by catching the Pokemon and by transferring it, which is essentially the same as releasing it in other games. You lose the Pokemon, but in this game you get a candy for releasing it. If you want to level up a Charmander, it takes 25 Charmander candy, which you can only get 3 from capturing and a 4th from transferring every evolution of Charmander, which means that in total, you would need 9 Charmanders to evolve a single Charmander. Which is why no Pokemon is entirely too rare, because the system only really works if you can actually catch more than one of them. It's a cool system in my opinion, because you get to keep the highest capture power rating Pokemon that you get, while still being excited regardless of the level of the low ones you find, because even the lowest level Charmander you could possibly find is still worth 4 candies, and you could use that to give your highest level Pokemon a uh, boost into Charmeleon. So overall, the experience of finding Pokemon and walking around is exciting for a lot of reasons. First, it's just awesome to be like, yeah, I found a Taurus in my backyard. I mean, that's something pretty awesome for any app player, and especially so for fans of the Pokemon series. Secondly, it's cool because it encourages you to explore the real world by way of the Pokestops. Unless you plan on running out of items all the time, you literally have to go to new areas and see what monuments and landmarks are nearby. Sure, at the end of the day, it is for the app, but it does encourage you to get to know the area you live in, which is awesome. And then finally, the socializing aspect of it is just great right now. What with it being an app that's hot off the press, there are tons of people of all ages playing it and helping one another. I've seen people from like age 50 to age like 5, and uh, I've been pointed towards certain Pokemon more than a handful of times, and seeing other people engage with the game makes it so much more fun. You can literally be walking around a corner and people will be like, did you catch that Rapidash? And I'm like, no, where is it? And they're like, oh, it's just in front of the DP Doe's down the street. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'll head over there and catch Rapidash. It it's, it's really exciting to see the way that everybody is actually interacting with the game. It's very immersive right now. So right now is definitely the best time to play, as far as I'm concerned. However, this isn't to say the game is without its flaws. To be perfectly blunt, they are numerous and they are glaring. The most obvious thing that comes to mind is the instability of the app itself. It's a common occurrence for the app to just stop working on a successful Pokeball throw. You'll hit the Pokemon with the ball, the closed ball will bounce and land, and then the screen zooms for dramatic effect, and... nothing. Because the app crashed. That especially sucks if you're using an instance to bring a Pokemon to you. 
because you pay, for instance, with real-world money, and those Pokémon will always disappear when you refresh the app if they were not caught on the throw that crashed your game. Additionally, the servers go offline every now and then for indefinite periods, which can be pretty obnoxious when you're literally standing on the corner of Route 22 and 31 for no earthly reason other than to catch Pokémon. It basically will leave you standing there twiddling your thumbs. Between those two issues, Pokémon will more or less inevitably be lost due to a crash of the app at a bad time. Uh, sometimes you'll be able to find that Pokémon when the app refreshes, and sometimes you won't. It's a gamble, and it sucks to have those instability issues breaking immersion in a game that is so clearly driven by immersion. Let alone the fact that the app can take 30 seconds to load after a random crash, and occasionally it won't load at all and you'll have to refresh the loading app. That all said, I'm assuming that that's the type of issue that will be prioritized for fixing, so take all that with as many grains of salt as you would like. What I'm much more concerned about is the game mechanics. In my level of experience, I am adamantly convinced that Niantic, the Pokemon company, are shooting themselves in the foot with a semi-automatic pa 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 with their Pokecoin cash grab. Just to be perfectly clear, I don't think microtransactions are necessarily evil, and the pay-to-win elements of Pokemon Go are kept in check somewhat by the fact that you do have to actually play to win, even if you are paying. What I do not think is okay whatsoever, though, is the complete experience drop-off you encounter around level 15. If you are a player below level 15 and you don't believe me, that's absolutely cool, but mark my words, this is not something I am making up. Let me explain. At level 15 or so, you still encounter the same Pokémon as previous levels, but with higher capture power, which is the in-game level of the Pokémon. Higher capture power means that the Pokémon are more capable of breaking out of Pokéballs, and unless I'm making this up, it also makes them more likely to bat the ball back, which essentially wastes your Pokéball, or to jump or dodge, causing you to have a higher chance of simply missing them. At level 7, you'll catch Pidgeys 9 out of 10 times on the first ball that actually connects, but at level 15 or so, those same Pidgeys will start costing you an average of 3 or 4 balls, assuming you aren't missing them. Some Pidgeys will get caught right away, others will break out of the ball 6 or 12 times. Other Pokémon like Zubat can waste even more than that because of bad depth perception, and sometimes they'll just run after they've wasted your Pokéballs. Once you get over the hump in leveling, catching Pokémon in a single ball starts to become more the exception rather than the rule, and like I said, it really doesn't help that you have to learn flying Pokémon like Zubat and Pidgeot are farther back than they appear every time. Also, a uh, side note, when you throw Pokéballs far away, be sure not to shake your phone, because when the ball is in midair, you can curve your throw after the fact by shaking the phone. Anyhow, back to the Pokéball shortage. On some level, this comes across as scummy to me, because it's the same kind of garbage cash grab that Candy Crush Saga does, where they'll make you feel like a god for completing levels in a game that's designed to be just easy enough to make you feel like you're good at the game, and then, after they've sunk their claws deep into your psyche, they'll ramp up the quote, difficulty, unquote, and your only viable way of performing on the same level as before is to pay for extra lives, or in Pokemon's ghost case, Pokeballs. Is it really harder to catch a Pidgey with a 153 over its head than a 22? No. The gameplay is nearly the same, it's just been established at that point that you care about catching the dang Pidgey so they know that they can nickel and dime you for it, and they're going to nickel and dime you for it. Just to refresh you guys, I've walked nearly 50 kilometers in 5 days playing this game, and hit 460 Pokestops. On an average of 10 kilometers and 90 Pokestops a day, you'd think I'd be doing pretty well for Pokeballs, but I've had to just about completely stop catching certain Pokemon to prevent myself from running out over trivial crap like Zubat and Caterpie. Which is all well and good, except that means I just wind up ignoring 80% of the Pokémon I encounter and therefore stop enjoying the game as much. This is reason one why I say they're shooting themselves in the foot. It's bad enough to struggle on any level to capture a Pokémon that is widely considered to be garbage like Pidgey, because feeling less powerful as you level up is counterintuitive and just sucks, but the only way to even maintain the resources to continue struggling is to pay for Pokécoins? That is not fun and it is not addicting either. That will turn away veteran players, unless it's changed. Pokeballs of all varieties should come generously from Pokestops at higher levels to combat the harder to catch Pokemon, or the bonuses like nice, great, excellent, and curveball catches on Pokemon should have higher catch rates so increasing player skill actually matters instead of just giving you experience bonuses that are pretty insignificant at the end of the day. Essentially, I believe paying for Pokeballs should be something that you do if you don't feel like walking 8 kilometers every day. Higher CP Pokemon being harder to catch makes sense, but extorting us with the practical need for purchasing Pokeballs is an underhanded and lame move. Unless they're trying to balance the game around the 15 people on Earth who literally live at the intersection of four Pokestops, Pokestops simply aren't generous enough for the effort they demand at a high level. It is unreasonable to expect us to walk two or even three Pokestops for a Zubat's worth of Pokeball catches. I'm speaking as someone in an urban area, god forbid you live far away from Pokestops. I mean, this could that could really take the fun out of the game to be forced to buy them. I've seen a few different um, fixes for this suggested. 
Uh, having a home base where you refresh your Pokeballs to, say, 30 every day would be a pretty good solution in my opinion, but it wouldn't let you go over 30, it wouldn't just give you 30, it would refresh the number to 30 at minimum, I guess, is what I'm getting at. I think that would be a pretty good fix in some part for people who live outside of urban areas, and then people who live in urban areas should get more from Pokestops at higher levels, because if you don't have Pokeballs, you can't play the game. If you can't play the game, but you know that getting 5 or 6 Pokeballs is necessary for a Pidgey, all it's going to do is make you be like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't play the game. One final point on this high level difficulty ramp up topic, higher level players will tend to have found more of the Pokemon out there already, so when struggling to catch a Weedle or Caterpie or Nidoran is so common, and there aren't even new Pokemon to find either, the fun of the game really starts to needlessly peter out once you've hit level 15. Just to be perfectly clear, my problem with this is not in any way that I am burnt out or that I have burnt through all the content or anything like that. My problem is that doing the same things I was doing before has gotten more tedious for less reward because of the higher quote-unquote difficulty level, while simultaneously I have less new stuff to find too. It, uh, it pretty much hurts the experience a lot to have Pokeballs be less powerful while the Pokemon that you find are less meaningful. A few mechanical flaws are pretty glaring as well. Leveling any Pokemon gives you 500 experience, but leveling some Pokemon costs more of a candy than other evolutions. Because every Pidgey is worth 4 Pidgey candy, and it costs 12 Pidgey candy to level a Pidgey into a Pidgeotto, but it also costs 50 Pidgey candy to level a Pidgeotto into a Pidgeot, and both are only worth 500 XP, which is more efficient. Pidgeotto. Which means that if you're trying to maximize XP, you say, haha, no thank you Pidgeot, and then you send all of your evolved Pidgeottos to the Pidgeotto mill where they get ground into Pidgey candy, to feed your growing armada of Pidgeys so that you can hit level 20 faster. It bothers me that this is so clearly out of line with the philosophy of every other Pokemon game ever, where they, the whole point of it was to level up your Pokemon friends from their puny little level 2 selves, all the way into the hulking level 100 monsters that they can be, with care and love and friendship, haha. Because of the concept of opportunity cost, you're literally punished for trying to invest in any particular Pokemon, so from an experience standpoint, it makes no sense to hit the third evolution of any evolutionary line. It's a pretty standard concept in gaming that the more you invest into something, the better the payout should be. If I spend 50 Pidgey candy to get a Pidgeot, I expect 3000 XP for making the effort to save up, not to get 500 XP from one Pidgeot instead of 2000 XP from four Pidgeotos that actually also cost less Pidgey candy, wouldn't it just happen that way? Not only is it faster to get four Pidgeotos, it costs less candy and it's more total experience too. It seems like a huge oversight that just devalues larger effort, which I believe that's bad design. My final gripe is the footstep system for tracking Pokemon. I have literally walked in a single direction for 25 minutes trying to get closer to one and had it not work. It seems to get bugged out and not update properly, which occasionally just makes it totally unusable, because basically, if the Pokemon doesn't come within two steps, it's not worth going for at all, since you can't actually tell if it's three steps away or if it's just your nearby Pokemon list is bugged. The issue seems to be exacerbated by the fact that living in an urban area like I do, I think more than 9 Pokemon are sometimes nearby, and the list doesn't know how to reconcile larger numbers, so maybe having a second page of nearby Pokemon would help, but I also think that having at least some general idea, like a 180 degree feel of having an idea of where you go for when they're 3 steps away would probably be kind of nice somehow or other. Or even if you could just cross-reference your game with someone else's game, looking at a nearby list, and then, you know, narrow down which direction you need to go. But at the moment, having one three steps away, it sometimes literally just wastes your time. I mean, I, again, I walked 25 minutes in a single direction with no progress. There, there's a problem there. Um, finally, I want to talk for a moment about gyms. I haven't participated in any of them much myself, but the concept is pretty cool. When you choose a side to align with between Team Mystic, Valor, or Instinct, you're then set to defend or attack gyms that are led by your allies or opponents. The system basically gives you a payoff for getting higher level Pokemon, and at the same time helps to establish a communal goal to work on with your friends. Pokemon gyms are fought over all the time, and by design it's possible for a relatively weaker team to eventually chip down a strong gym, which is okay in my eyes, because that means that gyms require active upkeep, which can only reasonably be achieved by having a community of one team defending the gym. It could very well lead to all-out wars for a gym, which is pretty freaking cool in my opinion. I'd like to see a little bit more on incentives to try and take out gems in terms of rewards for winning fights like items or eggs or pokeballs, but I'm not complaining because, I mean, the app is a week old, let's be honest. So a final topic that I'm sure a lot of people have been thinking about is uh, microtransactions. 
I'm not going to complain about the way that the Pokecoin store is clearly designed to make you spend money, because the game was designed for profit, and that's perfectly fine. In fact, I would really prefer to see the game make a massive profit so we can play more of it in the future. I would love to see shiny Pokemon introduced into the mix, player trading, TMs for getting stronger moves on Pokemon with bad movesets, and HMs that could give you single-use bonuses like using Flash to make an extra Pokemon show up, or Fly to get the exact direction for a Pokemon on your nearby list, or Dive for a guaranteed water Pokemon even if you're not near a body of water. Maybe even single-use items like Poke Flutes so that you could catch a rare wild Snorlax while other people wouldn't be able to without the item. Legendary Pokemon could appear for anybody, and the first person to find it and catch it is the one that takes it off the map. Generation 2 and 3 Pokemon, and maybe even beyond that, could be brought into the game if people want to actually keep playing and see the game grow like that. I mean, Pokemon contests like in the Safari and Silver and Gold, titles for players that have extraordinary medal achievements and the like, and I mean, size exists in the game. How cool would it be to have real life Pokemon tournaments where everyone is tracking down the Scyther? There's so much potential here. I would love to see the game make a huge profit, and I think the worst thing that the game could do is burn out players again. Pokemon Go is a cool game. I really hope that they just turn around the cash grab aspects because people are perfectly willing to pay for the lucky eggs, incenses, lure modules, and egg incubators as is. People will pay to use those items in the game, so don't force them to pay to play even on the most basic level with Pokeballs, because that's not going to give the game a long life with high level players upping and going. Just so it's clear that I'm not the only one thinking this, I'm going to go ahead and link a reddit thread in the description, the most highly upvoted reddit thread I've actually seen on the Pokemon Go subreddit in fact. Here's hoping they take the app and make it the best game experience they can, and until then, have as much fun as you can, and remember, vote with your wallet with the Pokeball issue. Stay cool, guys.